Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see types of steel structures. So let's see what are the types of steel structures. First one is roof trusses. Then we have suspension bridges. Then steel bridges, shale structures. Even the water tanks are constructed with the steel. Then we have gantry girder, built up members, which are columns generally, and last building frames. So all these are the types of steel structures. I'll see, I'll tell you what these structures are one by one. So let's see first the roof trusses. Now, what is a roof truss? A roof truss is a structure consisting of different members. See, as you can see in the picture here, this is a roof truss. So it will have different members. This bottom one will be known as tie member. These inclined members are known as strut. This long one will be known as principal rafter. So this member is called as truss. Okay. Then the members of the triangles are placed under the tension and compression but do not bend. See, this point is very important. What it says these members which are forming the triangles see this one is forming the triangle now so these members will only carry either compressive force or the tensile force so our structure is purely the axial one means it will either carry the compressive force or it will carry the tensile force no bending moment will be carried by these trusses that is the main function or main property of this roof trusses now where they are used this roof trusses where they are they will be used the first condition is when the span is very large and beam construction is not possible see for example you may have seen industries or industrial floor systems in which you want large column free area for example you don't for example this is a column at one point and this is a column at at this another end and the total span between this is say 30 meter now if the span is so large what will happen if you provide the normal construction that is rcc construction the depth of beam will increase because why as the length of beam or span of beam increases the depth of beam also increases so to avoid this what we will do we will provide roof trusses above it and because of the roof truss you will get a large column free area there will be a support at this point and there will be a support at this end and you will get a large column free area that is first advantage or first condition of providing the roof trusses then when we need large column free area or the space again when we need large column free area and when beam construction is not possible we will provide the roof trusses and last one when the area of is of heavy rainfall when the area which is this structure will be constructed if it is of heavy rainfall means that area will have rainfall over the large period of time in a year or the rainfall is very much then in that case roof trusses will be provided then the second type of steel structure is towers now you may have heard about these structures or you may have seen this type of structures so they are of two types or they will be either self-supporting or they will be cable stayed now what is self-supporting and what is cable stayed means they will be supported by their self bed or cables will be stretched so those cables which are carrying their load will be called as cable stayed towers and they are made up of steel angles this i have told you in the introduction video steel angles means what they will be angle sections like this see like this they will be used this type of angles can be used for this type of towers 
or the steel tubes can also be uh, used now what is steel tubes if you are using hollow sections for example if you want to use hollow rectangular section it will look like this now it will be a hollow rectangular section if you want to use hollow circular section it will look like this but hollow circular will not be preferred hollow rectangular will be preferred for the towers so you can use tubes and they will be bolted at the side means the bolting of this members together will be done at the site itself then towers where towers are used they will be used for telephone lines windmills observation towers you may have seen this type of long towers like this and person will be standing over it for the observation so they will be used for that also then lighting purposes power transmission so all these are the applications of using towers then the next structure is suspension bridges a suspension bridge will suspend away from huge steel cables see these cables i am talking about so this is the type of suspension bridge and these cables are nothing but the steel members na these are steel structures so it will also come under the category of steel structures these are the cables which will have very high tensile strength they will hold together or they will take the load of this bridge or the deck and they are really high strength so these are the uh, suspension bridges and in which steel cables will extend as you can see in the picture here steel cables will be uh, extending from that from one end to the other on suspension bridge small cables which are called as suspenders these cables are called as suspenders they will run vertically from the bridge deck to the main supporting cable see there will be one vertical main supporting cable this one is the main vertical supporting cable and from that these cables will be suspending and they will be holding this bridge deck so the basic structural components of a suspension bridge system will include stiffeners girders then trusses you may provide girder or you can also provide trusses over it like this there will be trusses like this then main suspension cable then main towers this one is tower and the anchor edge for cables at each end of the bridge so these are just the component parts of structural uh, member that is uh, suspension bridge then we have normal bridges see even you can use truss bridges bridges as i told you if see if this is your bridge okay this is the abutment at the end there will be piers in the intermediate and above that for example this is a bridge deck so above that you can provide the steel trusses like this you can provide like this okay so truss bridges and plate girders bridges are commonly used for the small to moderate spans and cable stayed this one cable stayed and suspension bridges they will be used for large spans so what are the various types of steel bridges that we can use we have arch bridges which you can construct in the steel cantilever bridges can also be constructed in steel even the small foot bridges you may have seen they are also constructed with the steel suspension bridges then truss bridges cable stayed cable stayed bridges all these are the examples of steel bridges main advantages of structural steel over the construction material are see if you are providing uh, we are saying that structural steel steel bridges will be used for not only for the arch but also for the cantilever bridges also for the foot bridges also for the suspension bridges truss bridges cable stayed bridges so they will be used for very large varieties so why they are used for so many applications see they have advantage because steel if you are using the steel as a construction material it will give you strength it will also give you the ductility it will be fabricated very easily on the construction site there will be rapid construction so it has so many advantages that's why we can use it for the bridges okay then we have gantry girder see gantry girders are nothing but girders na which supports the loads and that can be transmitted through the traveling wheels of the crane you may have seen the cranes very long cranes like this na 
they will be steel they will be constructed with steel like this so any moving load can also be resisted by these gantry girders and they are laterally unsupported they will be laterally unsupported and they will be used to carry the heavy loads from one place to another these are nothing but the structures steel structures which are used for carrying the heavy loads then they are generally used in workshop factories or at the construction site for example in workshop site if you want to take a heavy load for example there is a machinery say its weight is so large 100 ton 150 200 tons and if you want to take this particular material particular thing from one place to another in a factory or a workshop so what you will do you will use one crane na, like this it will be of steel structure you will take this from this point and you will take it from take it from that point to something somewhere here so for taking or for transporting heavy materials from one load to one place to another you can use the gantry girders function of gantry girder is to lift and move heavy material machineries from one place to another as i told you this gantry girders will be used to transfer the heavy materials or heavy things from one place to another then we have chimneys next type of steel structure is chimney so what is chimney see i have given you the photo here these are nothing but steel structures and the main function of this chimney is to exhaust the vent exhaust the gases see as you can see in the picture here the gases are being exhausted from this structure so these structures are nothing but your chimneys this is your chimney so this is also a type of steel structure na? so why they are used they will be generally used in the factories or where there are some chemical plants and they will exhaust the gases these structures i'm talking about so they will exhaust the gases safely outside into from the factory to the atmosphere and st uh, steel chimneys are also known as steel stacks if you get confused somewhere they may write steel stacks are nothing but the steel chimneys they will write or they will give the steel chimneys this name steel stacks so they are just must in the factories because they will exhaust the gases and they are provided for the emission of gases at suitable heights so as to minimum the pollution if you want to have some high height if you want to increase the height you can increase that you can construct the chimney of that height so it will minimize the pollution and they are sufficiently large diameter so that they will permit the flow of burned grass gases in picture you will not get it but they will have large diameters so so that they will exhaust these gases then the next type of steel structure is building frame so they may include rigid or semi-rigid or simple connected frames this concept is a separate chapter we have separate chapter on that what is semi-rigid and rigid frames so i'll not explain that explain that one but just remember these building frames may be in rigid may be flexible may be semi-rigid they may be simply connected so you can write it in the examination like this and they may be single or multi-storied as you can see here see this is a ground floor this one is first floor this one is second floor so it is g plus 2 so it can be multi-storied also these building frames or it can be a single story also then it may have sim um, multiple spans see this one is one span and this one is second span as you can see here this one is one span and this one is one span if in between there in between there there is a column so it may be multi-span it may be single span it may be multi-story multi -story, or it may be single story then the function of building frame is to give the enclosure see it it is giving the enclosure now in this picture as you can see here so that is the function of building and steel buildings are used for a variety of purposes including the storage workspaces living accommodation even in uh, areas of mumbai you can see uh, in bandra side or in at some places they have constructed the factories they will work in that and they are constructed with these steel frames building frames so they will be used for storage also they can be 
used for workspaces and they can be used for the living accommodation. So this was the video on types of steel structures. Thank you.